Hello everyone. I'm Kevin Kupchinski, planetarium and STEM educator at the Springfield Science Museum. We hope you come to visit the museum sometime soon, and we especially look forward to seeing you in our planetarium when it reopens. Meanwhile, please enjoy this astronomy video. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the constellation Taurus. You can see Taurus in the evening sky, late evenings in mid-October. It is out in early evening by December and can be seen for the next few months until it is lost to the glare of the setting sun by early the next May. Identify it by a distinctive V shape accompanied by a second small cluster, the Pleiades. The bright star is Aldebaran. The name comes from an Arabic phrase meaning the follower. This probably refers to the fact that it rises after the Pleiades and follows them across the sky. It is a red giant, a star that was once similar to our sun, but is now in a late stage of its life. It has used all of its hydrogen and is now larger and cooler than the sun. Even though it is cooler, it is 43 times the size of the sun and over 400 times as bright. It is 67 light years away from us. The remaining stars of the V are part of the Hyades cluster. They are stars that formed in the same gas cloud, they're similar in age, and are all moving in the same direction through our galaxy. They are 150 light years away, over twice as far as Aldebaran. We cannot see the three-dimensional nature of the galaxy from our perspective on Earth, and it is a coincidence of our two-dimensional view that makes Aldebaran appear to fit into the V pattern. The smaller cluster is the Pleiades. It has a rich history that we will cover on its own in another video. For now, we will note that both of these clusters are known as open or galactic clusters. Open clusters have tens to hundreds of stars, weakly connected by gravity, formed in the same gas cloud. They are all relatively young stars and will eventually drift apart from each other due to chance encounters near other stars. The Pleiades are 100 million years old and 440 light years away. The Hyades are older, 650 million years, but also closer, only 150 light years away. This area has been seen as a bull since the time of the Egyptians and Sumerians about 6,000 years ago. At that time, the stars of Taurus, especially the Pleiades, rose with the sun at the spring equinox. For this reason, it was considered to be the first constellation of the year by those people, and it is thought to be the origin of the letter A, the first letter in the alphabet. This tradition of Taurus as a bull passed on through the Babylonians to the Greeks and the Romans. If you extend the legs of the V, you come to a star on each side that represents the tip of a horn. It has a reasonable resemblance to the face and horns of a bull. The brighter tip is the star El Nath, an Arabic name meaning the one budding with horns. The tip of the other horn is known as Tianguan, a Chinese interpretation where the star represents a gate on the heavenly path of the ecliptic. Nearby this star is the remains of a supernova that was recorded in China in 1054. This massive explosion was so bright that it was visible during the day for three weeks. Today, you need a telescope to spot it. The Chinese name for the Hyades cluster is B, a long-handled net for catching small animals. In the Americas, indigenous people of the Guianas and Brazil saw the Hyades as a tapir's jaw. This resemblance to a jaw is seen in other cultures around the world as well. Among North American indigenous peoples, the Hyades and Pleiades clusters were often seen as groups of people. To the Mono people in Central California, the Pleiades were a group of young women who ate wild onions while out gathering food. Their husbands, the Hyades, threw the wives out of the house because of their skunk breath. Later, the husbands regretted their action and tried to catch up, 
but they are forever separated in the sky. In Australia, several Aboriginal groups have a theme of the Pleiades as a group of young women who are chased by a character represented by Orion. The Hyades represent a guardian, sometimes the older sister of the other women, who protects them with the magic of the star Aldebaran. These people associated the reddish color of Aldebaran with fire. Some researchers found evidence that they observed the variation in Aldebaran's brightness. Today, astronomers know that Aldebaran is a variable star with a barely noticeable change in brightness over a long period. The next time you are out under the stars from late fall to mid-spring, look for this distinctive constellation of Taurus. Good luck and clear skies in all of your star watching. We'd also love to see you here visiting the Springfield Museum someday. If you like astronomy, check out our website for the Stars Over Springfield event, and you might even consider joining the Springfield Stars Club. Thanks for listening.